I believe now that the time has nearly arrived when the people will be prepared to receive a great truth that gives an impulse to their mind and sets them investigating a subject which will open to their minds new and enlarged ideas of themselves and show man what he is and how he makes himself what he is. It has been said that to know himself is the greatest study of man, but I say to know his error is greater than to know himself. For every person is to himself just what he thinks he is, but to know his error is what ought to be his greatest study. For the last 25 years I have been trying to find out what man is and at last have come to know what he is not. To know that you exist is nothing, but to know what disturbs you is of great value to everyone. The world has been developing itself and we look on and never think it is ourselves. Through our ignorance of wisdom, we have made a man of straw and given him life, intellect, and a head in the image of our own creation. To this image we have given the idea man and certain capacities such as life and death and have made him subject to evils such as disease and death. To this man of straw, the words I have quoted are applied. This man of straw has been trying to find himself out and in doing this has nearly destroyed or blotted out his real existence. So in looking for this man, I found it was like the old lady looking for her comb and finding it on her head. I found I was the very idea I was looking for. Then I knew myself and found that what we call man is not man, but merely a shadow of error. Wisdom is the true man and error the counterfeit and when wisdom governs matter, all goes well, but when error directs, all goes wrong. So I shall assume the old mode of calling man, as he is called, and make myself a principle outside of man, just as man makes all laws of God, as he calls them, outside of himself. So man admits he is not with God or a part of him, Therefore, he belongs to this world and expects to die and go to his God. So he lives all his life in bondage through fear of death. Now this keeps him sick, and to avoid all these fears and troubles that disturb his mind and make him sick, he invents all sorts of false ideas and never thinks they are the cause of his misery. He invents all sorts of disease to torment himself. Standing outside of these ideas, I know that they are the works of man, because God or wisdom has never made anything to torment mankind. Error has created its own misery. Having had 25 years of practice, I have seen the working of this evil on mankind, how it has grown and increased, till at the present time there is more misery from disease than all of the evils put together and every effort to arrest this evil only makes it worse. Within the last seven years, I have sat with more than 12,000 different persons and have taken their feelings and know what they believe their diseases were and how each person was affected and I knew the causes. Therefore, I know what I say is true, that if there had never been a physician in the world, there would not have been one-tenth of the suffering. It is also true that religious creeds have made a very large class of persons miserable, but religion, like all errors based on superstition, must give way to science or wisdom. So as science progresses, religious creeds give way to a higher intellectual belief, and so superstition in regard to religion will die out as men grow wise, for wisdom is all the religion that can stand and this is to know ourselves not as a man, but as a part of wisdom. But disease is making havoc among all classes, and it seems as though there will never be an end of it unless someone can step in and check this greatest of all evils. I have been in the habit of sitting with patients separately and explaining the disease and the cause, etc., till I have come to the conclusion that I can cure persons that are sick if I am in their company, and the number only helps to hasten the cure. I have no doubt that I can go to an audience of 1,000 persons 
and cure more persons in one lecture than can be cured by all of the doctors in the state of Maine in the same time, for I know that one half my patients I do not see long enough to explain as much as I could in one lecture of two hours. There are a great number of sick who are not sick enough to be cured. Man's life and happiness in this enlightened world is dependent on physicians who have made dollars and cents the cure. So if man has not these, he must suffer. My object is to relieve man of some of his sufferings. I am sent for to go to distant parts of the country and have always found a large class of poor, sick persons not able to be cured, and so they must suffer. I want to relieve this class who are not able to be cured and also give directions to minds so that this wisdom shall govern the man. It will be necessary to say that I have no religious belief. My religion is my life, and my life is the light of my wisdom that I have, so that my light is my eye, and if my eye is the eye of truth, my body is light. But if my eye or wisdom is an opinion, my body is full of darkness. Science is the process of getting wisdom.